returning from two injuries, not one. And these two quarterbacks did not disappoint. Brady finished with four touchdowns, while Dak threw for over 400 yards and three touchdowns himself. But this game came down to one final drive. Here we go. Check it out. Bucks down one, under a minute to go. Brady finding his old buddy, Rob Gronkowski, 20 yards to get into Cowboys territory. Shortly after, Brady connects with Chris Godwin for 24 yards to get into field goal range. Questionable non-call. Ryan Suckup drilling the 36-yarder to seal the win. 31-29, close one. Ooh, says Mike McCarthy. Oh, I wish I made all the right decisions. An incredible ending to an amazing opening night. Bucks pull out the very close win. Here is Brady after the game on doing the right thing at the right time. The important part about the last drive of the game was, you know, we executed some really good plays at the right moment. And um, it was it was great to see. It's going to give us a lot of confidence. Oh, uh, there was no no doubt we were going to go win the game. We just, with him, it was just who was going to make plays. And uh, guys up front did a hell of a job protecting. And um, and guys went and got open. There's plays that, that we left out there that could have res uh, resulted in touchdowns. And um, it's game one. It's a long season. Uh, but we've got to make sure that we... Uh, get better from this one and allow this to be um, to propel us. Hey Greg, did last night say more about about Tom Brady in the box or about Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I'll, I'll say this: it said a lot about the Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys, but I think it said more about Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the reason why I say that is because when you win a Super Bowl, you obviously know that all other 31 teams are targeting you. Every single game that you play an opponent, you're circled on their sheet. And so with them coming out, yes, they showed some rust. They showed some inconsistent plays. But they found a way to win. And ultimately, in week one, you're going to see some unscouted looks, some things that you're not prepared for offensively as well as defensively. And they found a way to get it done. Tom Brady, at the age of 44, we heard him say this about He's going to play as long as he feels like he can win a Super Bowl. He can still win a Super Bowl playing the way he played last night. The first half, he was lights out. And those interceptions, they weren't on him. He had some throws that he wants right. back. But this team looks really good defensively. I'm not concerned. They will get better. They will get pieces back. Um, I, I like the Bucks. Greg, here's my thing, though. I, I expected greatness from the Bucks. You know, um, I, I, this is what I expected. I expect them, expected them to beat Dallas more easily than they did. So I was more impressed with Dak. I thought we learned more about Dak and the Cowboys than we did about the Buccaneers because we learned that they just may be a contender. I thought, Greg, that they outplayed Tampa Bay. Yeah, they obviously didn't win on the scoreboard, but I thought they outplayed him. If they get that 31-yard fi field goal made, if they make that extra point, they very well could win that game. They marched up and down the field. They only had two three-and-outs without one of their best offensive linemen. Dak only got sacked one time. They won the time of possession by almost nine minutes. And defensively, one of the worst units we've ever seen defensively for three quarters of last season. They look good against one of the best offenses with weapons galore last night. And I got to shout out Trayvon Diggs. As I'm watching the game and just kind of scribbling notes in my pad, I noticed that Trayvon Diggs was lined up on Mike Gary. Evans 39 right. out of 47 plays. And Trayvon oh, shut him that. down. He only gave up <laughs> one reception for 10 yards. It's just a little something I scribbled, but that's what it was. Yeah. One catch for 10 <laughs> yards. So Trayvon Diggs balled out. If the defense can remain that strong, then watch good out for these taking. Cowboys. It's a really solid right. note taking. That's good. So you write in your diary also. I love that. We both do it for sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's turn our attention to the uh, the big non-call last night. Chris Godwin's crucial 24-yard catch that set up the game-winning field goal. Some saying it was a flop. Some saying it was a push-off. Some saying nothing because they didn't see it. They just didn't watch the game at all. Don't listen to those people. Here's what Godwin had to say. Take a listen. No, no, no. Ne never worry about offensive pass interference. Uh, just try to go out there and make a play. Um, 
think it's just like a little like hand fighting on both parts. Uh, but you know, he had, he had some good coverage. It was a great pass, and I just try to make a play for my team. Never worries about OPI. Hey, Greg, you had over 570 no, receptions sure in your career. What did you make? <laughs> Take Nick out of it for a second. What did you make of this play? You know, when I was playing, this was legal. Like, it was illegal, but we got away with it. The pa offensive pass interference yes. wasn't a big call. But in today's game, the way they call it, there's so Thank much you. discrepancy. And this is why I don't like it. it. You have to throw this because he did disengage wow. the defender at the end. And I'm a receiver. I don't like it. But because they're Obviously. both in an arm wrestling battle, which we heard Chris Godwin say, but at the very end, he does disbar the defender with his arm. And yeah, once that gotcha. arm extends, you typically have to see a yellow flag thrown. Look at the arm extend right there at the end. Once you see yeah. that, that is typically indicative of offensive pass interference. So, Greg, let me let me defend the officials on this one for a moment, but then I want to show a different play. What you're basically saying is you want it called consistently. And what I would argue is this is called very consistently. That is offensive pass interference as long as Tom Brady isn't the one throwing the ball. And if Tom Brady <laughs> is the one throwing the ball, it's not. Like, that's how it's called, and that's how it's usually been called historically. And so, was this, an, was this a huge, like... A no doubt about it, egregious miss. No, this is a judgment call. I think it's 60 40 OPI in most circumstances, but it happens. But the play earlier that led to instead of being first and goal, a field goal by Dallas is beyond me. And that's Levante David getting upset, ripping his helmet off, banging it on the ground, and then w walking. And what is more baffling about this is the gaslighting by folks on Twitter saying, actually, that's not against the rules. What? And then they're sending me screenshots saying, no, 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 look at the rule book. It says only you're, it's only a penalty if you take your helmet off. And this is what it says in the rule book. To taunt an opponent, okay, he's not doing that. To celebrate, oh, he's not doing that. Or in demonstration. Well, that's a demonstration. It's a demonstration of frustration. And if that's not against the rules, you know who'd love that's to know nice. it? Keanu Neal, <laughs> who plays for the Cowboys, who a few years ago popped his Achilles. And after he popped his Achilles, when he's laying on the ground, threw his helmet off in frustration. And the referees flagged him. It's an amazing clip you can go watch on YouTube. The referees make him take a timeout for the injured player and flag him because he's on the ground with a popped Achilles and he threw his helmet off. My whole life watching football, that's a flag. And that is a massive spot in the game. It's going to be first and goal. Instead, it's a field goal. Now, uh, you know, amazingly, they end up making the field goal and Zerline did rally at the end of the game. But those are two calls, in my opinion, Broussard, that typically go one way. And, you know, it just happens. It just happens that they went the way of Brady's team. It just happens. But that's a flag, man. In fact, real quick, before you go, Broussard, Greg, just tell me. That's a flag, right? Your that's whole a flag. You're playing. Is that a flag? That's a flag. That's a flag. Okay. Every single night you play football, that happens. It's a flag. Okay. Thank All right. You. Look, I I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Greg Jennings has gone over to the dark side against the receivers, Greg. This was not offensive pass interference, all right? And, and, and here's the proof. Jordan Lewis said he didn't say it was. After the game, he's, I mean, if anybody has reason to complain, I mean, when they're in films, they're going to point this out to Lewis. And he, what human being wouldn't say, but it was offensive pass interference. Coach, he pushed off. If I'm in the press conference after the game I'm, and I'm asked about it, I'm like, yeah, you saw it. Everybody saw it. You can say it in a way where you don't get fined or whatever, but you saw his hand extend. He pushed me down. I didn't flop. He didn't say it. He said, I can't call it like that. He said, the ref said no call, so it's a no call. So if Jordan Lewis isn't calling it an OPI, then I'm not going to sit here and do it. Lewis knows he had his hand on his back. 
He knows he had his other arm under, he was hooked underneath Godwin's arm. So Godwin was like, get, get my arm off me, dude. Let me get away. And he made a great catch. So enough Nick stopping. That was a great play. And Greg, come, come back, Greg. Come back from the dark side. I don't need to come back from the dark side. Nick, I'm, uh, uh, Chris, I'm always with the receivers, but here's here's the deal. I don't care what <laughs> Lewis said. Like, the coaches are going to submit this play as a possible offensive pass interference call, call that was yes. missed. And because of the disbar the, at the very end, it is what they call in the National Football League today. They didn't call it last night. I'm not saying one side or the other or the refs just completely egregiously, like Nick said, missed this call. But this right here, yes, they are wrestling. Both defenders are. And so the receiver does has an, the have the opportunity the to get hands off within the framework. Once you go outside of the framework, which it happened at the end, mm -hmm. and you can distinctively see the defender. He doesn't just fall just to flop. Like I, I'm, I'm sorry, he's back paddling, yeah. and I've been in that position where any little push gives you an advantage. I've done it but, my entire career. It, but good to know, and Jordan Lewis, if this happens to you again in a big spot, at least you know you can rip your helmet off and slam it on the ground because you're upset. <laughs> Not against the rules in the NFL. <laughs> so at least you can do that to, you know, cleanse yourself a bit. Didn't know. Oh, we'll see you right. a lot this weekend. Nick, Nick might rip his helmet off watching this big game Sunday. His two favorite quarterbacks going at it. Can Baker make a statement against the home, the homes? And why is Nick even wearing a helmet when he watches football? That's next. First things first.